Well, Sold Out Cymru, 20 years on, we are so grateful for the past and we are so expectant for the future. We're not where we used to be. Things have really changed in Wales, especially in Welsh-speaking Wales over the last 20 years. And Sold Out Cymru has been a, a key part of that, along with others. So we're, we're not where we used to be. We're grateful for the past. Lives changed, churches planted, disciples made, leaders born. But we're also expectant for the future because we're not at all comfortable or content or satisfied with where we're at either. Let's be very honest. The nation of Wales needs the gospel of Jesus Christ. The church of Jesus Christ needs to wake up and rise up with a new boldness and faith. And that's what we want to speak into as Owen and Merrill and myself, we're really praying over this 20th year sold out. How do we mark the moment and what is God saying? We felt prophetically drawn to the character of Gideon. The headline I want to bring in these two part messages today and tomorrow is simply this. God wants to use unlikely people to win an unlikely victory. God wants to use unlikely people to bring unlikely victory to Wales. And that's the heartbeat of this message. And that's the story of Gideon that we're going to unpack. Today, I want to look at Gideon, the unlikely leader. Tomorrow, we'll look at the Battle of Midian, an unlikely victory. And part one is found in Judges 6 and part two in Judges 7. I want to encourage you, would you read those chapters over the next 24 hours between this session and the next? And would you allow the Spirit of God to speak prophetically and to summon you, as he called Gideon, to call you into the action? This message I'm going to bring today has two parts to it, the call up and the clean up, all under this heading, the unlikely leader, uh, Gideon. Now, of course, to get the story of Gideon, we need to know the backstory, what was going on at the time. And Judges 6 tells us in the opening couple of verses, we simply read this again. Notice the word again. Israel is on repeat. In the time of the judges, they are stuck in negative cycles. And again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And for seven years, he gave them into the hands of the Midianites, their enemies. Because the power of Midian was so oppressive, the Israelites prepared shelters for themselves in mountain clefts, caves and in strongholds. Notice then Israel is overrun by the enemy and they are hiding in caves. This is ironic because they're hiding in caves on mountains that were strongholds that God gave them in past victories that were epic. Remember the story of Israel. They've Two generations ago, they'd been delivered from slavery in Egypt. God broke the power of Pharaoh and opened up the Red Sea and they experienced this dramatic victory. They'd known great works of God in the past and Israel, actually, we know with the benefit of hindsight, they'll see great things ahead in the future. King David is coming soon. Solomon and the glory days. They've got great things behind them and great things ahead of them. But they're caught in this negative moment, caught in this difficult time where they are overrun by the Midianites. Now, when we ask the question why, well, you could give a material answer to that. The Midianites were just stronger than them. Right. And Commentators note that the Midianites had trained camels for battles and uh, camels, if you like, were the new tanks, <laughs> the new technology of their day. And no doubt a camel charging at you is a pretty frightening and fear fearful experience. Right. So you could say, well, it's because of the camels that Israel were overrun. But actually, if you look carefully at the story, of course, that's not the real challenge. Because God, almighty God, who broke the power of Pharaoh and opened up the Red Sea, is not frightened of camels and he's not phased by them either. In the same way today, when we say, well, why is the church declining in Wales? Why are, this, why are we struggling to communicate the gospel? Of course, you can give a material answer. Well, you know, it, it was easier in the past when people didn't have Netflix and Nando's. But now there's so much more going on that, well, people don't need that stuff anymore. No, no, that's... That's a very superficial and inadequate answer. Almighty God is not at the mercy of camels and he's not outdone by Netflix and Nando's. Do I hear an amen? <laughs> the point is, God is Israel's problem, not the Midianites. What do I mean? Well, actually, we, we read in Judges in a very honest moment, God used the Midianites to humble Israel that they might turn to him. God is using powerful forces at work in our world today. He's not at the mercy of them, but he uses them to humble his people 
that we might turn back to God, that we might know victory again, not because we are relying on ourselves, but on him. If we compromise, if we are unfaithful to God, we will be overrun. That's the story of the past. You know, here in Wales, we have an incredible history, right? Incredible stories. At the time in the Old Testament, they built piles of stones to mark episodes of great victory from God. Today, we write books. Well, you can read the books. You can, if you like, see the piles of stones that have been made to tell the story of what God has done. Here in Wales, in the previous centuries, the gospel came with such power that it went global as a result. We have a great history and I believe we have a glorious future. And we're caught in this time where God wants to raise up unlikely leaders to bring back his kingdom and purpose here in Wales. That's what Sold Out Cymru was founded for 20 years ago. That's what we're about. We want not just to be a bit entertaining and have a new event for people to turn up to. No, no, we want to raise up unlikely leaders to win unlikely victories for the gospel here in Wales. And that's why the story turns as God turns his attention to an unlikely character called Gideon. As Israel is overrun by the enemies, we read in verse 11 of Judges 6, the angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak. Notice that tree, the oak tree in Ophrah that belonged to Joash, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. But Sir Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all the wonders that our fathers told us about when they said, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord's abandoned us and put us under the hand of Midian. The Lord turned to Gideon and said, go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? This is the call up. In a moment, we'll look at the clean up. But first, the call up of an unlikely character, Gideon. You know, if, if Israel's so overrun by enemies, you would expect that God would find a powerful, impressive, qualified, bold kind of leader. In fact, God chooses this man who, as he says himself, he says, I'm of a poor family. I, I'm nobody. And when God appears to him, what is he doing? He's threshing wheat in a wine press. Now, if you know anything about the process of sorting out wheat and making wine, you'll know that is a complete contradiction. When it comes to wheat, you take it into a broad open space where the wind blows and you sift it up in the air, you flick it in the air and as it lands, the wind blows the lighter stuff, the chaff, further on and the wheat and the chaff are separated. So you need a big open space to separate wheat. But with wine, you take the grapes down into a hole in the ground and there you trample on them. He's taking the wheat that's for the bold open space and he's hiding down in a wine press trying to there separate out the wheat from the chaff. In other words, the man is a contradiction of fear and anxiety, of feelings of utter inadequacy. He's hiding in a hole and he's got nothing going for him. And God turns up and says, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. I mean, it sounds like a joke, right? But towering over Gideon, as he says this, is this oak tree. Did you notice that? I believe all the details deliberate. This oak speaks of something powerful and impressive. And there down beneath it, you've got this pathetic Gideon. And I believe it's this contrast of the Lord saying, you are currently this. But mighty warrior, I'm going to make you this. Out of you, I will raise up an oak a display of God's splendour, precisely because you are so inadequate. This will be an opportunity for God to demonstrate what only he can do. Amen. God is doing this today. He wants to raise up those of us who are anxious and fearful and hiding away and feeling inadequate. And we're convinced that we are the least likely person that God could use. And God stands over us right now through this video and he summons us to a different future. Mighty warrior. Where is God getting that from? I tell you where he's getting it from. He's getting it from the future because God knows the end from the beginning. By tomorrow, at the end of tomorrow's talk, you will see that Gideon will become a mighty warrior. And God is calling him from the beginning and saying, I've got great plans for you. And if you will follow me, I will make of your life something you could never 
of him imagined. And that's what God is saying to sold out Cymru. 20 years on, God is summoning another generation now. And he's saying, I know you feel fearful and I know you feel inadequate. And I know the challenges feel utterly overwhelming. But what does God say? Go in the strength that you have. Here's the key. Am I not sending you? God has always done this. He's always stood over feeble people and said, but if I'm with you, we can do this. I think back to the 17th century. Think of someone like Griffith Jones, Land Arrow, who began this extraordinary movement that influenced Wales through educating people in the Bible and in the scriptures and raising up teachers of the gospel. But when God called him, I was just reading recently, actually, it's a beautiful little extract from his biography. When God called him, it says this, he was the son, he was a boy tending the sheep, the son of a farmer. One day as he knelt to pray in the corner of a field, Griffith Jones fell into a trance and saw the Lord Jesus who said to him, my boy, I want you to be a witness for me in the world. He calls a boy who's looking after sheep and says, I'm going to use you mightily. And he did. I think of another book I was reading from the 19th century, Grace, Grit and Gumption. And this is a story of people from South Wales in the valleys. And they are uh, the most unlikely of characters. You think of uh, John Pugh, for example, who was a railway worker. You think of Seth Joshua, who was a donkey driver and a street fighter. And God took these men and planted churches and transformed thousands of lives in the valleys in South Wales. God's always been taking the unlikely people and saying, if I'm with you, we are going to see this nation changed. And he's doing it again in the 21st century. In the 18th century, as I've read, with Hal Harris and Griffith Jones in the, the, the Grace Grit and Gumption story in the 19th century. Now in the 21st century, God is looking in our eyes and he's calling us out of our defeated mentality and he's calling us to, to agree together. We will not settle for how things are, but we will let God call us out and call us up into his purpose. So the call up comes and I see the only qualifying factor for Gideon. And I want to use this to encourage you. You may feel inadequate. I'm not trained enough. I haven't got the right CV. None of that matters for Gideon or for us. The only qualification is this. Did you notice that when God called Gideon, what came out of him? It's like God touched a raw nerve. When he said, my, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior, Gideon's reply was interesting. Well, if God's with us, where are the wonders of the past? I actually like that spirit. It's like Gideon's got this holy discontentment. He wants more. He's hungry for God. He's not satisfied with how things are. He won't just settle for living in holes. And I think the only qualification God's looking for in us is that we won't settle, that we're hungry for more, that when we get the call up, we're prepared to rise up and say, God, if you are with us, we're going to do this. Well, after the call up, Gideon is also asked to clean up his own backyard. Let me read a few other verses. We're kick kicking on in chapter six now to verse 24. So uh, Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and called it the Lord is peace. And then verse 25, this is the next stage now after the call up, we get the call to clean up. That, that same night, the Lord said to Gideon, take the second bull from your father's herd, the one seven years old, tear down your father's altar to Baal and cut down the Asherah pole beside it. Then build a proper kind of altar to the Lord your God on the top of this height. Using the wood of the Asherah pole that you cut down, offer the second bull as a burnt offering. So Gideon took ten of his servants and did as the Lord told him. But because he was afraid of his family and the men of the town, he did it at night rather than in the daytime. After the call up, it's time to clean up. Notice in Gideon's own family, his own father has an altar to Baal, the false Canaanite god, and an Asherah pole, a site of pagan worship and God says to him before you can take on the Midianites you must clean up your own backyard before God will raise us up to influence Wales he wants to call us to clean up our own backyards can I ask you what is there in your life like this altar to Baal hidden away perhaps but nevertheless a surprise to see something like that in one of God's people's homes what what surprising 
things are there in our homes, in our internet history, in the way that our credit history runs, in our relationships and romantic relationships with others, in the way that we're handling drink and drugs right now, in the way that we're on, acting online and in, in the way that we're conducting our relation. What, what is there that's surprising that shouldn't be part of God's people? Listen, folks, if we're going to be called up, we need to clean up. Sometimes the reason we live in dirty holes and do things that we shouldn't is because we feel no purpose to our lives. We feel like we're wasted, so we get wasted, right? We feel like we've got nothing to offer, so we live like it. No, no, no. God is raising us up. Great things are at stake. How you live your life really matters, not just to yourself and your family, but to Wales. So it's time to clean up, folks. We mustn't live in holes and in the dirt. We must live with holiness and purity. Can I say that again? We mustn't live in holes, hiding away in dark things that we shouldn't be doing. No, no, we need to live in holiness because God is raising us up to be a holy people to bring back his gospel to this nation. It's time to clean up. Can you hear the call, the call up to the call to action? Out of that call, I urge us to clean up in order that we might follow God's purpose. Your life is not futile. It really matters how you live. I call us even tonight in the light of this message. Would you put things right in your own home? Would you put that block back on your Internet history? Would you delete things that you shouldn't have? Would you get rid of? Would you end things that are inappropriate in order that we might be raised up a holy people to bring the gospel to Wales? Now, I want to finish by noting what happens to Gideon as he gets the call up and then as he chooses to clean up. Verse 34, then, then, notice, after he's cleaned up, then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon and he blew a trumpet and summoned the Israelites to follow him. Things are now going to change. The one who was hiding in a hole really is going to become a mighty warrior because when the Spirit of God comes upon a man hiding in a hole, nevertheless, God can turn him into an oak of impressive strength and peace. I I really feel this oak thing is significant. Derwen is the word in Welsh, isn't it, for oak? And we've actually named our house Tan of Erwen, under the oak, because, well, our house literally has an oak tree over it, but I believe it's prophetic as well. God is calling a new generation, planting oaks of righteousness as a display of his splendour. It's time for us to hear the call up, to stop hiding behind our excuses and feelings of inadequacy, Don't matter if you feel anxious, don't matter if you feel inadequate, as he used Gideon, God's going to use you. It's time to hear the call up and it's time to clean up that the spirit of the Lord might come upon a new generation of Gideon people to bring the gospel back to Wales. Let me pray for exactly that in Jesus name. Heavenly Father, I pray over my friends, my brothers and sisters listening right now. Almighty God, come by the power of your Holy Spirit and summon us out of our holes and out of our hiding where we've been living in the dirt and compromise. Lord, I pray for holiness and purity where we've been hiding behind feelings of inadequacy and anxiety. I pray you'd stand over us now and you'd summon us out of it. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. God, would you raise up for Wales a new generation of young people who are fearless and bold with the gospel of Jesus Christ in his name. Amen.